Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Attorney Gehi, and uh, we're going to begin the session very soon. And uh, we have two more minutes, and uh, uh, it's going to be very interesting to know about cybersecurity, uh, especially because I think uh, I understand that this may be a boring topic, but unfortunately, it is becoming an increasingly important topic uh, because cybercrime uh, is something that is a matter of grave concern. And uh, cybercrime is one of the biggest threats uh, of the century. And in the next 10 years, we're going to see an alarming rise in cybercrime uh, you know, in the United States of America. So if you don't know much about cybersecurity, at least I'm expecting everyone to know the basics of cybersecurity. So with me, I have some very interesting people today. Emilio is with us, uh, who's actually very much into security. And he'll be sharing his experiences of how we can kind of use uh, cybersecurity and protect our systems. And uh, his focus is going to be mainly on the hardware side. And I'll be doing some talking from the software end. And uh, we'll try to kind of give you, you know, a basic picture, picture at least, because there's no end to cybersecurity. You know, it can be on and on and on and on. But end of the day, at least we'll give you some basic tips of how you can secure yourself. And what are the most common things that people do? And also, we'll be talking about website security. Uh, we'll focus a lot of time on website website security, uh, especially because a lot of lawyers have websites, and sometimes in their websites they have programs uh, wherein they can kind of uh, you know clients can access the cases you know through the website by inputting the uh, the case numbers. So we'll talk about that. Amelia will talk about the threats of how you can protect them, uh, and some lawyers accept credit cards and how do hackers get into it? And thirdly, we'll be talking about when someone is asking you uh, as a lawyer to share your wire information. And that's something that Amilio is going to talk about, how careful you have to be to kind of, you know, look at transactions before you kind of deal with people who are in a different country. So it's time for us to get started. And uh, firstly, welcome everyone. Uh, this program is brought to you by My Legal Software. And I'm sure all of you know about my legal software. Uh, firstly, a thank you to all of you for making my legal software, you know, such a great program uh, today. Uh, a lot of lawyers have been scheduling demos, and they are looking at uh, you know the easy, uh, the, the easy features of uh, you know my legal software. It's one of the easiest platforms, and also we have uh, made sure that uh, we're trying to make it as cyber compliant as possible because your data, I know that uh, most of you do don't, don't know much about cybersecurity, but we take security very seriously. And uh, that's why a lot of uh, you know, law firms are uh, coming to my legal software. And uh, besides that, uh, the features that uh, people can find on the software is very different. You may not find a lot of features on other platforms that you may find on my legal software. And uh, this is organized by my legal, legal software. There are two versions. One is for the general practice lawyer, which means doesn't matter which practice area you have, or you can still use my legal software. And the second one is for immigration lawyers. And there's a very specialized version for them that includes forms, the master calendar hearing, the individual hearings, the visa bulletin, et cetera. So there are two separate versions. Now, there was one question that came from a general practice lawyer who said that, Mr. Gay, I am using a specialized product right now. And can I somehow use both these products together? The answer is yes, there is a way out for that. Or what you can do is you can either create an API if that company allows you to do that. Or the second way is to hyperlink the product. And if you call my legal software, they'll be happy to kind of help you with the questions. And, uh, you know, so let's get started. And... Uh, <clears throat> So I have Amelia with you here today, and Amelia will be doing a lot of talking. Hello, Amelia. It's wonderful having you. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon to everyone. Good to be here. Yeah. So, Emilio, a lot of people do, especially lawyers, uh, they don't have a clear understanding of cybersecurity. So now, as you rightly know, there are different components of, of cybersecurity. One is basically keeping your data secure. And your data can be stored in the cloud. And you may be using the software. So can you talk about the importance of data security in the cloud? 
and on your server a little bit so then I can talk further on that issue. Well, uh, <laughs> data data is the most important um, is the most important thing that our law firm have. Um, law firms, as we all know, are a main target for hackers and attacks, especially because of their information as they store useful and very sensitive information from their clients. So, if if an attacker have access to this information, it, then probably we have access to clients' lives. So we have to be sure that we need to protect that information. One of the of of these protections that we can uh, uh, that we can uh, improve uh, where we can improve is uh, having our backup copies on the cloud. The cloud is a server. There are servers around the internet where you can keep a copy of your most sensitive and more value, uh, valuable data, and there you can have access to it anytime, any in, anywhere. And with that, you can secure against a physical attack or a hacking attack if you have that information on the cloud. It is not the only um, the only um, step that we have to take. If we have it on the cloud, we can also go to encryption. We will go over that in a, in a, in a, uh, in a, a little bit later. But having it on the cloud gives us a second security to store our data. So okay. it's very so, important to have it on the right. cloud. So now, Emilio, see, uh, let me tell you a few scenarios. I'm going to talk. Uh, of how a regular lawyer talks, because a lot of lawyers don't even know much about the cloud. Believe it or not, I've seen lawyers mm. who still have an old CPU, a very old CPU, which means an old server, and they store all the data in the server. Now, I'm going to help those lawyers who still uh, haven't advanced a lot in technology of how they can protect that. So, you know, for lawyers who don't know much about technology, so you have a monitor. A monitor is where you see something. And then nowadays there are two different types of, uh, you know, kind of servers. One's are servers which are integrated with your monitor. And in the good old days, the server used to be that separate box, if you remember. Now, a lawyer asked me a question that I lost my monitor, my screen, I'm, I'm very nervous. I said, don't be nervous. There's nothing much they're going to get from the screen. From the monitor, they cannot get anything. The only time they can get it is if the monitor has a server which is attached to the screen, to your monitor. But if your CPU is separate, now consider your server, which you're seeing physically, is the same thing as your server being in the cloud. So that's how you understand what is the cloud and what is your physical server means what you used to store in your office in that little box means you're, you're, you're saving that same data in the cloud. The world has changed so much that that server has gone to the cloud, but there are still lawyers who deal with sensitive information. And I mean, they don't want to do, take the data to the cloud. So my option for them is to encrypt that server. How can you encrypt it? Many different ways of doing it. Number one is that you can really keep it password protected and protect your password in such a way, such a way that the computer breaks, your, your, your hardware breaks, but the person should not be able to hack it. And the second thing is what they can do, Emilio, they can encrypt the data inside. Yes. And that's where the software component comes in. Mm. And plus you can have firewalls. You know about firewalls, correct? Mm -hmm. How can we do that? And let's talk about a regular server which a lawyer is using in his office, and he wants to secure a server. Number one, I would tell them is to go for a very, very solid password. And when it comes to the password, you need to have a number. You need to have basically, you know, a, a sign associated with the number. And Special you can characters. have any other uh, character. And plus you can have a regular name. And the longer, the better. The longer the better. You can say John Martin one one two three four seven one nine two seven six uh, with with the colon. That's fine because it makes the hacker's life very difficult. So these are simple tips of how you can even protect protect yourself and have a two step authentication process. Emilio, the ball is in your court. Talk about it. Okay, just uh, adding a quick um, a quick advice also to uh, to the previous is that don't use regular passwords, which means your birthday, your name, your last name. Use passwords that are complicated to hack because 
when someone access to your website, probably they have, they will have say, they, they can have uh, have access to your name, to your last name, and people usually put my name, my, my birth name, and that's that's very simple to hack. So use combination of words that are, that, that are not direct, that, that, that directly uh, associated with you, something that, that maybe you know only you know, but nothing that is in public information. That's a, an advice also to keep a strong password. Now. Uh, regarding to to the uh, to the old topic, um, in this case, um, it, it was uh, sorry. Can, can we can we can you repeat that? Yes. So that, that the second the... part of the topic is now. Suppose we've gone through the password issue now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, 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 the two factor authentication. The firewall, okay. The two factor authentication. Then we get okay. to the firewall. Yeah. Okay. So once you you have access to your to your um, email or information or something, uh, you always have to log in somewhere. You have to log into your email. You have to log into your to your platform. You have to log into your software. Okay, so a, a two factor authentication means that you will receive always a code into your mobile device. This code has to be used in order to log in. If you don't have this code, no one will ever to to log in, even if they have the password. Even if they somehow got your password, your secure password, they will not be able to log in into your account because they don't have your phone number and also you, they don't have this code that they send to your phone number. So two-factor authentication is essential nowadays for security. Almost all platforms, almost a, a, every service have a two-factor authentication. So it's recommended you that, that you activate this two-factor authentication feature and you use it every single time. I know sometimes it can be tedious, sometimes it can be, uh, it, maybe it can take one more second, two more seconds from your from, from your time, but I'm sure that it will save you from a lot of troubles when uh, facing these hacking uh, attacks. Right, this, uh, by the way, folks, uh, for we just joined, Emilio is an expert in web security and he's good in security on the hardware side. So he's giving us his tips and of course, I'll be talking with the software side of what the law requires us to do. And uh, my legal software, the software is very strong. It has some very, very strong embedded security in it. And Amelia will talk about the security of my legal software also to you guys. So <clears throat> the thing is that the other thing that I've seen is Amelia, when law firms are using software and sometimes they wonder, oh my God, my old secretary got access to it. The reason your old secretary got access to it or someone was working in your firm is because your software that you're currently using is not may not be fully compliant with the recent protocols which have come in. So make sure that the software company that you're dealing with is really good because what it takes is for one hacker to come in and destroy you. It just takes that one hacker to join in and destroy. And I've had friends of mine who were facing a data, data hacking issue. And before that, how did I help them out is that I came up with a backup plan for them because they said that, you know, the data is vulnerable. And they said, Noresh, don't get me wrong. I don't want to sound like a fool. I said, you're not a fool. He said, why? I said, because I don't expect lawyers to know much about the IT side. And IT is a different animal altogether. Information technology is an ocean and there's no end to learning in the information technology side. Uh, I've studied uh, information technology from Baruch College. Uh, you know, I had taken courses, and plus I've, uh, I started with IT many, many years ago. So it took a long time for me to even understand what IT really means. So now, when you're dealing with your software part of it, is make sure that your software is also encrypted, or even if you're using you know, anything, Microsoft or anything, you need to make sure that, for example, you have your clients or, you know, million dollar checks lying over there. And, you know, the hacker sees, oh my God, the John Doe's, I've gone into his files over here. Oh my God, this is, these are $50 million transactions. He just needs to know the amount of transactions. Then what that hacker does, he basically gets into this reverse mode, but then he'll think about how that transaction happened, where the money would be placed. These guys are trained experts to even figuring out, figure out the banks and everything and try to kind of, you know, Get into it. That's why that's that's where these complaints start from. Because by the time you know you come to the starting point, the guy has already done his research, he's taken the money, he disappeared. So if you're dealing with escrows, if you're dealing with any amount of money, and if your passwords are not protected, if you're dealing with online banking, if you're dealing with credit cards, make sure that the software program that you're using 
is really good. And plus you have a company that's backing you up and testing, checking it up for you. And another thing which I've seen about a lawyer, oh, I was using this software. I was so happy just paying $20 a month. Guess what happened? That software company did not need a backup plan. And the client lost, all, the law firm lost its data. And they were in a mess because they had to get all the files back and everything. The better thing to do over here, as Emilio rightly said, have the data also stored in the cloud. Now, Emilio, there are people who don't like to save the data in the cloud and have an answer for that. Do you know what the answer is for that? Well, sometimes I think that people believe that this cloud is, is rocket science. It's not so complicated. It's very oh. simple. The cloud is only a, a amount of servers in the in internet where you can keep your information safe. So you don't have it physically, you don't have your information in your in your computer, but you have it somewhere else. But you will always have access to that information. So Absolutely. it's not very complicated. We have more, more tools now where only you can copy a file and paste it in a specific folder and that automatically synchronized with the cloud. So it's not difficult at all. I, I, I believe that people listen to this term cloud and they believe that it's something very complicated and it is not it's very simple and we made it actually as software engineers they made it simple for for normal people to have access to the services right so the other thing is that what i've seen is you know there are some uh, multi-million dollar transactions in which people don't want to go to the cloud and i understand and there are solutions for that too uh, 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 you know emilio i'll tell you what the solution for that is there are some companies that they come to your office and they set up their servers in a very, very private place for you. And they also encrypt the data in such a way so that they're not on the cloud, so nobody knows what you're doing. And that data is encrypted so well that even if someone comes and he steals those computers, nothing happens to it. So yeah. those services are also available in the market, but this is only meant for those people who really want to learn technology to the next level. That's what I talk about. And uh, those options are also available in the market, but you may not need it, but a handful of people will need it. One of the common issues, which I've, uh, you know, uh, M MLS has been getting a lot of demos from lawyers uh, and people are very happy using it. And a lot of immigration firms signing up, general practice lawyers signing up, uh, you know, uh, left and right, because they have seen of what is the difference between my legal software and other softwares in the market. And you just have to experience it to know it because, you know, take a demo, learn it, you'll see a huge difference. And uh, the deadline features are just world-class, like, you know, it's for you to explore it. Uh, and other than that, they have these ordered features. You cannot miss deadlines. Your data is secured. At the same time, you know, uh, you have every different types of calendars which are synced and you can get notifications on your phone and, you know, get samples, templates, everything you could imagine. And some lawyers are using MYLS, uh, you know, and integrating it with the other software. They are very happy with it. And also another good thing I like about MY legal software is that it also has the hourly billing feature integrated. It has Zoom integrated. It has WebEx integrated, which is the need of the hour for the court. So you have a lot more that you could think or imagine in my legal software. Plus, above all, is the security component, which uh, Emilio is very good at looking at. And so... So other people in the team, Ravi, they look at security very, very, very carefully. So make sure that your security is the key because even if you look at the ABA rules, expecting lawyers to be cyber compliant. State bar associations are asking you to take a CLE course for cyber compliance and it's a must for you. So now, another thing which I'm noticing is, Emilio, is uh, when the data get hacked, gets hacked, then people start dancing and running about. And once if the data is lost, it's lost. And these people even call you up and they tell you that I can give the data back and I'm going to charge you so much money. Rather than getting into that vulnerable situation, you can call my legal software at 934 Law Tech and see whether how good you are. And we'll be happy to you know, help you with your data analysis of how secure your software is. Uh, and it's a hardware thing. We can recommend you someone who can handle you, your hardware part of it. No. On, and website security, that's another thing which I'm noticing, Emilio, because my legal software also does, uh, you know, develops website. So there are these websites, they collect uh, credit card payments. Can you tell me, like, how hackers, uh, like, they infect malware into those systems where they try to hack? Can you talk about that? 
if your website is not completely secure, you are under the risk that hackers may inject, inter intercept, and put some uh, pages inside your website. This is called phishing that they try to replicate a, web, uh, a payment page or a bank page or some transactional page with the same style, exactly the same page. But the only difference is that when you put your credit information in there, you send the information, then the information, the credit information is not going to you, it's going to the hackers. So if, they, if, your, if your website is not fully protected and they can somehow hack, inject this kind of malware into, into your website, your clients, can be in a serious uh, trouble and you can be in a serious trouble as well because the, all those transactions, the, the card transactions are not going uh, secure. They are going to hackers' hands. So they can do this uh, They can do this, um, this way. They can hack your website and you don't even notice because, for example, from four transactions that you have in your website, they let one pass. So it means that you are still receiving money, but you don't notice that three of those transactions already went to their hands because you don't notice, because if you have a high volume uh, or a sell website, you, you probably don't, won't notice that. So it's important. Please, please, please always uh, um, do security assessments, security tests on your website. No, there's another thing which I've noticed is that, uh, you know, uh, lawyers come to the office, when they come in, I've seen the computers, they just come in and they log on, no password, nothing. I think that is really bad, Emilio. They just come in, they log in and it's open. It's it's open. Now I have a recommendation for that. And as lawyers, we all are very busy. So is Mr. Gay, who's busy all the time seeing clients. You know, there, there are some basic things that live with lawyers don't do. They need to install cameras. Believe it or not, it's a no-brainer. The reason you need a camera in the office, it's very easy to see who entered your office, who went, came in, who left. Because sometimes, you know, someone might be having a key to your office. The person comes in, please install a camera. Those are basics of life, which we all forget. We get so busy with the complicated world that we forget, you know, the low hanging fruits of life, the easy things to do. Always install cameras in your office. So it's easy for you to spot at least that who's the person who came in. Now, a while ago, you know, I know of this person uh, who actually had an issue with the data. And the person came to me and said, uh, Naresh, I have something to tell you. I said, what is the issue? He said, looks like it that someone came to my office and downloaded the files. And this is years ago I'm talking about. So I was very much shaken up. Then he said, don't you think that this can happen to any lawyer? You are correct. John, this can happen to anybody. So the first thing you need to do is if you have cameras, it's easy for you to catch the person. If not, make sure that the building where you are, there are cameras in that building. So at least you will be able to nab the person. And the next thing that you need to do as a lawyer, which not many people know, there is a cyber crime unit with, within every police precinct. So you have to call the cyber crime unit, write this down for people who don't know much about the cyber crime unit. They come to your office, they look at the computers, they see the data that was taken from there. They are experts. They can even look at the time when the data was downloaded from your system. So they'll be able to tell you when the download happened, what was downloaded. Then after that, they look at the cameras, they take the pictures. After that, criminal charges are brought against people like that. And in every country, like it doesn't matter where you are these days. You can be in Nigeria, you can be in India, you can be in Holland, you can be in France, you can be in Germany. Exactly. There are cyber crime units and they do not take it very lightly anymore. Hmm. Uh, because cyber is a universal thing and once you're in jail, your life is done. So make sure that exactly you protect your data. Uh, you know, it's just going to give you a headache, nothing more than that, if you have that issue. So having cameras is something that I strongly recommend. And the other thing that I recommend, Emilio, is the new technology tools, which I'm telling people, either fingerprint auto authentication, or you can also have face recognition for your computer. What do you feel about that, Emily? Or even eye recognition, which is a new thing. Well, right now, uh, all those technologies are very, very popular. 
So especially with your fingerprint, it's very popular. If you have your face recognition, it's very popular. Oh, the eye recognition. That, really uh, yeah, the, your eye recognition is very popular too. So all this has to come in your, it has to, has to come across your security plan. You have to, have, you, you need a security plan. What, how would you protect your information from the beginning to the end? Everything has to be covered. Everything, even the, the training of your staff, that, that they need to know how to fight this kind of uh, this kind of security. They need they, they need to be uh, uh, informed on how this technology works because some some people they don't really know. They think that this is very difficult. It's not difficult. It's very easy to use. It's very easy to 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 configure. And of course, it's very safe, which is the main part. So all those technology are very popular now. I really recommend them to to have it in in, in your office if you if you're really having sensitive data because remember usually the bigger the firm the bigger the sensitive data normally it's that way so keep keep, keep in mind that you can you you don't have you don't waste in security you invest in security so it's that's oh, very important that's very well said you invest in security you do not waste money in security no another thing is that uh, in my legal software we have features right when someone even tries to download more than x amount of files the system shows a shockwave and a, a protection sign. And you can even spot the person where he is. You can even call the police and get the person arrested. That's how strong we are in security. Here. And that's a feature in the wireless, which you won't find in a lot of softwares. Uh, so this is how cyber security should work. And uh, secondly, other than that, uh, is it's a good idea for you to invest money with detectives sometimes. Uh, especially if you're a big law firm, and not many people know the importance of this. So, if you're a big law firm, there are detectives who work for police, uh, you know, precincts. And uh, you know, I know quite a few people who actually work with me, uh, you know, all the time, and uh, they are located in different parts of the world. And those people are very good without anybody knowing that uh, that they are watching you. And Surprising, they can even come to the person doorstep, catch them up and lock them up and send them home. This is known as data protection folks. And this is the level of reading I do. At the end of the day, it is so easy. At the same time, it is so difficult. It is so easy when you know the right people. It is very easy when you can spot the right talent and employ them when you're dealing with a big law firm. Uh, in Manhattan, that is more than a thousand lawyers. You need to make sure that you have a cyber, uh, a retired cyber police officer or a cyber, cyber detective working for you. And it's not that difficult. Those are things which are going to become essentials for the future. Not about the legal industry. Forget that. The diamond industry is a fantastic example. The gold industry, you know, these are things that can happen in the banking industry. It can happen in the stock market. You know, law is small, but there are bigger industries where it's a bigger concern. It can happen with you. Like you have those only around, you know, $3,000 in your bank. You're gone. You're wiped out with your $3,000. So it's the same hacker who can target anybody. So make sure that you're fully secured. And even in the office, let me tell you, we have people who are looking at security day and night here. Day and night. When someone blinks, I know about it. I get it right now on my, my messaging system. This is what is going on. And I've been called people that said, oh, Mr. Gay, yes, I was doing this. It's work-related, and I've hung up the phone. I'm a type A, folks. I take everything very seriously in my life, anything and everything. And before you invest in, even if you have offshore workers, anything you're doing, make sure the best detectives working with you. You have the best of the best working with you in any country, in every country. Even if you're dealing with the US, you have someone working in another, another state, make sure you're in touch with the best police officers, the best agents, so that exactly it should be easy to kind of nail people and put them behind bars. That is the level of security need to get up to speed today. Emilio, your thoughts on this? It's totally true, necessary. We need to uh, get that into 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 uh into into mind that uh we need this kind of security also is this is like physical security and 
because right now the data breaches, the, the steel information, the hacking is becoming more and more and more common nowadays. So it can affect us in a way that it is almost unimaginable. It, we will be affected. It's an we, international we, issue. Yeah, that's it's international issue. It, it, we have reports. Mm -hmm. we, 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 a big company like a diamond company or something can even use Interpol. Interpol mm -hmm. is very active in these cases. Mm -hmm. And they come and they pick up people left and right. And there are so many cases when people get picked up by Interpol and they go to jail and they rot yeah. in jail for 25 years. That's a crime. Oh, it is a crime. Serious crime. It serious. is a crime. There and is a very, no bond. very serious. And, uh, you know, there is no bond in some of these cases when you're dealing with high end crimes and everything. And I'm glad that the world is taking those things very seriously. Yes. And, uh, people who have gone to jail in this case, they've ruined their, ruined their lives. Uh, they can't come out of it. Looks easy, but the, the road is very, very bad, very tough. It is. The next important thing is that how you train yourself and prepare yourself for cybersecurity. First thing is don't be nervous. Second thing, as a lawyer, you will not know everything. Have a company come and an analyze it for you. Make sure you use the right legal software. Because your software is the key to what you're using. Your software is the key because that has sensitive data in it. Have a software analysis check. Have a hardware analysis check. Make sure that you have proper firewalls and also make sure that you're backing up your data. Now, Emilio, I'm going to talk about backing up of data at length. Can you talk a little bit about what backup means for the layman? Backup is essential right now. As we already spoke, uh, you can have backup, uh, a backup sorry, in, your, uh, in your cloud service, your your uh, trust cloud services that you can rely on that has you know all the securities. There are many options in the market. We are uh, we, we cover all of them. So um, there there are also other options right now to back up your information. You can use physical devices, external devices to have to have your backup. You can encrypt those uh, physical devices. You can also encrypt your cloud uh, backup as well, so no one can ha can fa uh, have access to it. So backup right now. Is a must. It's a must because it, it, it is not. It is not only that you can access to it any anytime anywhere. It's it's also that if you suffer from an attack, it can be any kind of attack. It can be a hacker attack. It can be a natural disaster. Also, you are protected because you have all your backup. You have you just get a new computer or a new cloud service, and that you don't love your backup and everything is there. So you lose your physical devices, but you never lose your information. And right now, there's nothing more important than information. That's what keeps your company running, information. That's all. Now, another thing that what lawyers have to do, they also have to take a CLE, uh, continuing legal education on this. And what is the law requiring you to do? And this is important. Get a software company, get a hardware company to look at whether your systems are properly protected. Hmm. If you're not doing that, you're doing injustice to yourself, trust me. Make sure that someone looks at it. Make sure that you're in good shape. Uh, and it's not that expensive, really. You know, when you have a simple checkup, make sure that everything is good to go. At least you can sleep in peace. So, but imagine that one client calling you one day and asking you, where are my files? And you cannot locate them. And like, you know, your secretary ran away or your paralegal ran away. You cannot locate them. You don't have access to the data. What are you going to do? Think about those things. And... Uh, uh, so we're getting some questions here. So we'll talk about the questions in the next five minutes. And if people have questions, start posting your questions and we'll be happy to answer them. Uh, then what happened in one case, Emilio, was about a lawyer. And this lawyer did not pay his paralegal. What the paralegal did, he took a CPU. <laughs> Central Processing Unit in those days. He told him, I'm not giving it to you until you pay. And this lawyer did not have a backup. He had to pay him, but I told him, listen, number one is you should have paid him paralegal. But secondly, how could he keep everything in that one server without having a backup? And forget the paralegal. If that particular server gets blown off, and if there's no backup, what is he going to do with all this? They don't even know these things. And lawyers, some of them, they want to ignore this issue completely. And uh, what are some legal consequences of a, uh, of a, a data breach for lawyers? 
you can be subjected to lawsuits from clients in the event exactly if you have data breaches, if you cannot recover the data. And if it's a very sensitive data, if you don't have a backup, you're looking at serious trouble here. Because even when you go to court, you don't have the file, the judge is going to give a look. He's going to tell you what's going on, counselor. Did you take the data class? Did you consult with the data kind of management company? Do you have a good software in place? Those are the common questions which are coming up. That's why even if you're looking at courtroom technology, they're becoming very secure with it. And I'm very impressed with the way the courts are doing it. And you know, especially I'm very proud of our federal courts, the way they are handling things at the stage. So you have to make sure that if all these wonderful judges are doing it, the courts are doing it, why can't we do it? And uh, you know, uh, people who are calling us, we are very happy we are helping them. But people who are not calling us, good luck to them too. But make sure, please, it's a humble request that you don't have a lot of people in this field. You don't have a lot of people who know much about data security. They may just give you this wonderful talk. Hey, yeah, 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 do your data comply. They should be giving you reports. They should be working with you on a month to month day basis. They should be investing time with you to let you know, hey, this is where you're wrong. How many of your companies are doing that? If you're a lawyer watching this, hold your hand to your heart and see how many of them are actually doing it for you. Data has to be taken seriously. I'm not saying that it'll not happen. But if it happens, are you ready with the backup? If it happens, are you able to trace the person? If it happens, do you have the manpower? Do you have that intelligence to get the person arrested? Those are things you can anticipate today. So these are factors that I kept in mind when you're dealing with anybody working anywhere in the world. The person doesn't have to be working in a foreign country. He may be working in your backyard right behind you, and he may be having access to your data. It's as simple as that. People think about data security. Oh, the person has to be located in uh, some remote part of this world. He should be in Iceland, or he should be in Switzerland, or he should be in uh, Africa, or he should be in Asia, or he should be in China. No, you can't be sitting in a backyard with your data right there. And you won't even know. You should know what's an IP in number. You should know exactly how to trace them through satellites. There are technologies there. So that's what this class is all about today. And you won't learn these things in many different sessions you're going to attend. It's just going to be the scratching the surface but they will not talk to you about the practical point that we are talking over here. So one other thing, Amelia, which I've seen is uh, that when people deal with the websites, you know, they, I mean, that's also part of security. Their daily bread and butter depends upon them. And they think like by, by security, I, they just mean kind of, you know, security of the documents of the clients. Security can also mean your website security. If you have a WordPress site, just think about that time when your, your website crashed, you know, and the guy is giving you the runaround, your web developer, and he's giving you the runaround because the plugins were not properly secured. So can you talk about plug, plugin security for websites, Emilio? So we all use websites. If you, if you are not on internet nowadays, you are nowhere. You need to have your website. And as you have your website, it comes also security risk. So like, uh, like Mr. Kehi said, we, we need to take in consideration that websites are also vulnerable to the attacks. As we already explained, we use plugins. These plugins, these uh, services are developed sometimes by us, some, sometimes by other third companies that give us a service. So we also need to uh, make sure that all, that all those plugins are secure which means that we have to install solutions like firewalls, anti-malware into our website. This is a, it's a, pre, a pretty similar concept like we did in, in, into our physical devices, but now online. With this kind of solutions, we can make sure that no one will access to our files without um, having access to them, that this is what hackers do. Uh, what, what hackers do. They act, try to access to our files. They try to exploit these plugins vulnerabilities. And we have to be always on top of that. That's what, uh, that's what we do. That's why uh, our security team do. That is, that, that's checking every day, about uh, every time, our, uh, about all the new 
updates, all the patches that we need to do on this software because software is not perfect. No software is perfect. So we have to be always, always on top of that, checking that, running mal anti-malware uh, um, um, scans, uh, running firewall security rules to block uh, attacks because yes, they don't they, they don't always steal all information. That's one of the of the of the um, reasons why they can attack you. They can also just try to bring our website down, go down. And that's it. So when people try to get to your services, to your website, they will find a blank page. And you are losing clients, you're losing time, you're you're cool. losing, you're losing money at the end of the day. So what so my legal important. software can do for you, uh, my legal software can maintain your website. Uh, ADA compliant websites and make sure that you get more business with the site when you engage into the SEO and the digital plan. Uh, for case management, of course, you all know that uh, my legal software is very good. Uh, we are cyber compliant. Uh, we try to make sure that we are encrypting as much as possible to make sure that your data is secured and it's properly saved. And if you ever kind of uh, don't find that data in your office, we make sure that it's properly secured in the proper cloud. Now, that's another question which people have. What is the secured cloud server? Go with a good data management company like my legal software. So they know which server you need to back yourself up. Because if you may be backing your, you know, your data with a server, wherein all the hackers might be owning that data. How do you know that this is a good company? See, hackers can also own data in the cloud. Has anyone thought about it? No. Due diligence in this world is a must. And there's no end to due diligence. There is absolutely no end to it. So you can only do this much. And there are some other questions. What are the key components of cybersecurity plan for law firms? So the key components are making sure that your software that you're using is fully secured. Make sure that it's prop, uh, you have proper protections. Mm -hmm. Number two. Uh, third thing with cyber, uh, with, uh, from the software perspective is to make sure that name, date of birth, addresses, social security numbers of your client are properly, properly, properly kind of redacted or saved in the cloud. Uh, key information about finances, your finances, uh, your QuickBooks, all the data is properly kind of uh, password protected so that it doesn't wind up into the hands of unscrupulous people who can misuse your data very, very important. And also set data alerts. For example, like if someone is trying to log in into your system or trying to do something vulnerable, you should be able to get a data login and that. That is very, very important that you get an alert or notification. Uh, from the hardware side, as we really mentioned, it's up to basically you to see uh, whether your hard drives are kind of properly, have uh, proper kind of basically secure encrypted measures in it. At the same time, they also have proper kind of password protection in it. And uh, other than that, fingerprinting is very important to make sure that uh, the uh, computer recognizes your fingerprint or your eye scan, or basically like face recognition. Those are the new things that can be, you know, all taken into consideration. So suppose even if your manager leaves, your secretary leaves, or uh, there's something which is known as a user, there's an admin, there's a super admin. So sensitive data should be in the hands of super admin. It should not be in the hands of admin. You know, when you have that critical data that you're dealing with, some very special clients you're dealing with. So those are features that are incorporated in my legal software. So, you know, the, so that you have, you know, that access, the control levels also define cybersecurity. What is cybersecurity? It means you're securing the data. User can have one level access. The administrator can have a second level access. The super administrator can have the highest level of access. That is known as defining security. Hope I think a lot of you were present are learning. I know it's a very dry topic and I do admit it. How can lawyers ensure that the third party vendors are also following cybersecurity? Therefore, they have to work with companies like my legal software so that they do the due diligence to see whether they're actually using the right vendors. If you're not using the right vendor, again, you're vulnerable to that. So work with a vendor, like you know, with the company where lawyers are involved. And you know, so you know that you're dealing with the right people working for you. And the other problem, Amelia, which I'm seeing is that uh, lawyers, they're giving the websites to manage to people who are not from the legal industry. That's another big problem. They're putting up 
things which are not even allowed in the legal profession. They'll say that he's the number one lawyer on the face of this earth. Compromising with your license books. How could you say I've seen a company which someone retained and that person wrote he's the number one lawyer on the face of this earth. And I was about to clap. I said, wow, who's the genius? I'd love to meet this lawyer. The best of the best of the best lawyer of this world. Who's allowing that? Look at the vulnerability that you're seeing. Folks, and that lawyer whose name came up, his answer was, oh, I didn't tell him to do that. Sorry, the buck stops on your desk. Because as a lawyer, it's your duty to look at all this and stop the nuisance from happening. Ignorantia juris non excusat. Do you, do you all know what that means, folks? Ignorantia juris non excusat means ignorance of law is not an excuse. And that's a very famous Latin uh, you know, kind of uh, saying. And that's followed by American courts all the time. So ignorance as jurist non excusat is something that you all need to remember, especially when you're dealing with site security, when you're dealing with things, uh, hackers and everything, uh, you know, that is important. So if anyone has any questions, uh, we can take them. But if you want to schedule a demo, and if you're dealing with my legal software, you're dealing with case management for general practice law firms, for immigration law firms, uh, these softwares are secured. You can try them out. And, you know, of course, there's no end to security, but we try our best to keep it as compliant as possible. And if you're dealing with websites, if you want to deal with a good website, which is cyber compliant and make sure that you're protected, you're getting enough business above all. And if you're getting uh, you know, proper SEOs, digital marketing, you can call 934-LAW-TECH or you can email at mylegalsoftware.com and uh, the team will be happy to get in touch with you. This is Naresh M. Gehi. I'm the founder of My Legal Software. And uh, this has nothing to do with my personal legal practice, which is Gay and Associates. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of My Legal Software as the founder. And with me, I have Emilio, who is from My Legal Software. Thank you so much for your time. And it's a pleasure being with all of you. And email us your questions, schedule your demos. If, and uh, it's a free demo. You don't have to enroll or there's no cost or obligation. They're also providing a limited time free uh, you know, use of the software for people who really want to see what it is and what the differences are the key. What does MYLS bring to the table is more important than anything else for all of you. So thank you, folks. And if there's any other question, please let me know. We'll leave one more minute for questions today. And let's announce next week's topic. So I'm going to type it right now. So next week, we are going to talk about the ABCs of a badass false Okay, so right now I'm, uh, I'm I'm watching some questions here. I probably I'm gonna start answering. Meanwhile, so I said, what are the consequences of failing to comply with industry standards of cybersecurity regulations? This is uh, this is heavy. This is this is very important. First, you can face legal penalties, like because you are not you you are not uh, following the cybersecurity regulations, and they can result in penalties like fines and uh, sanctions and lawsuits. So. These penalties can significant uh, can be significant and may result thousands in, them, in uh, financial loss. Thousands of dollars. Mm, thousands of dollars. Next, you have also also have loss of reputation. What's going to happen to your firm if you are known for this kind of <laughs> of behaviors? If everyone knows that they can hack you, what's going to happen to your to your reputation? It's very it's very straight. Uh, also, you have financial loss. This this is what Mr. Gehi said that we are going to lose thousands of dollars. Um, also, uh, we, we, we can even face a business disruption. This can disrupt an entire business operation and may result in down, it may result into downtime. Uh, the, and, and again, it all, always go to financial losses. And you can't uh, 
you can right now be uh, unprotected and you can face now financial loss, especially nowadays. You have to be fully protected. So all this can come from not, not um, the consequences of failing to comply with these industry standards. So it's very important for people to have the right uh, case management software, a good legal software, at the same time, have a good uh, you know, hardware, hardware plan in place in order to be fully pre protected. Make sure that your data is properly secured in the cloud. Make sure you have a good website that is very much kind of, you know, uh, which is really good in terms of malware protection. Make sure that you have the right plugins. Make sure that exactly your data is fully protected, even if it's on your website, because that's your reputation, as uh, you know, Emilio said. So thank you, everyone. It's wonderful being here today. Next week, uh, not next week, two weeks from now, or uh, exactly two weeks from today, and that would be, I think it's going to be the 30th of uh, March, 2023. Very important. We are going to talk about the ABCs of a bad spouse case, and this is good for every lawyer, even experienced lawyers, and you're going to see things which you may not know about Baba, and how basically Baba can become a game changer in a case, and creative strategies in Baba cases. So we'll talk about the ABCs first, then we'll talk about creative strategies of a Baba case, and how we can fight them and you know get a result that you may have not imagined. So thank you, folks. We'll be, see you next uh, on the 30th. And if you like this, share it with your friends, uh, you know, post it everywhere, and spread the word that my legal software is the company when it comes to case management, uh, uh, general practice law firms, uh, immigration law firms, and you're dealing with websites, my legal software is the way to go. You want to get more business, uh, you want to have you know good clients coming to your doorstep, you want to have a good SEO plan, my legal software may be the answer to your question. Thank you for watching. And this is Tony Gay. And this, uh, uh, as a disclaimer, uh, I'm speaking with you on behalf of the uh, founder of uh, my legal software. And this has no connection with my personal practice, which is Gay and Associates. And thank you to the entire team. Thanks to Ravi. Thanks to Brian. Thanks to Priya. Thanks to Emilio for being here. And thanks to the entire team for making this a success. And above all, thanks to every viewer over here for encouraging your friends to try my legal software. We've been uh, very much successful in having demos, and a lot of people are signing up. And thank you. I cannot thank our viewers enough for spreading the word. I did not expect this exponential growth in my legal software. This has only happened because of viewers like you. Keep up the good work. Tell your law firm to just take the demo, try it out, and feel for yourself what is the difference between my legal software and other softwares which are out in the market. Thank you all. Thank you all.